today we're talking about whales, behemoths, and llamas. Meta releases Llama 4, a new crop of flagship AI models. As you may recall, when the Deep Sea came out a few months ago, it kind of put everybody into a scramble, specifically Meta, who organized a war room of people to try to figure out how to get back into being the king of the open source AI space. Now, for each new model that comes out to make a splash, it has to have at least one thing that is just overwhelmingly better in. DeepSeek was fast, cheap, open source. The R1 was somewhat competitive with, for example, the O1 in terms of reasoning, but it won because it was open source and it was insanely cheaper, but it won because of the algorithmic breakthroughs, making it much cheaper, faster, etc. When O1 came out as the first reasoning model, that's why it was such a big deal. Now Llama 4 comes out and it's good, but the absolutely groundbreaking brand new thing that nobody expected is this. The Llama 4 Scout will have a 10 million context length window. That is right now unrivaled by any of the other Frontier Labs. Mark Zuckerberg referred to it as a near infinite context window. So working with the Gemini 2.5 Pro that has a 1 million token context window, you feel it when you're trying to produce stuff. It, it feels like it just has more room to think. We're also going to have a 2 million token context window. But as you can see, Llama 4 doesn't beat it by a little bit. It beats it by a lot. It jumps all the way to a 10 million token context window. But let's dive in and see what Meta has in store for us. So we have four tiers, four levels of this model, and each is different in its own way, starting with the Llama 4 Scout. It's a 17 billion active parameters, 16 experts. It's a mixture of experts model where each expert is responsible for its own area of expertise. They're called up to complete the prompt depending on what you're asking for. 109 billion total parameters, and that's the industry leading 10 million context length optimized inference for speed. There's a bit of a debate on whether or not it's going to be running on consumer grade hardware. We'll get to that in just a second. Then we have the Llama 4 Maverick, 17 billion active parameters, 128 experts, and it's a native multimodal with a 1 million token context length. So this is the model with uh, multimodal abilities, being able to see images, videos, etc. One million token context length is still very, very big, very huge. And we also have the not yet fully available Llama for Behemoth, which is, that's, that's quite a name. 288 billion active parameters, 16 experts, 2 trillion total parameters. So with active and total, basically active is what will likely be used at any specific sort of prompt that you give it, whereas the total is the total number of parameters that it has. But with the MOE, mixture of experts, you're not using all of them at once. So if you have like a, a business with a thousand people working on it, but you call a hundred of them into a room to work on a special project, that hundred people in the room, that's your active workers on that particular project. Whereas, you know, your total company-wide sort of total number of workers is a thousand. Similar here, active versus total. So the Llama 4 Scout offers the industry leading context window 10 million and delivers results better than Gemma 3, Gemini 2.0, Flashlight, and Mistral 3.1. I think over here, really, you got to be using it and testing it for your own specific use cases to really see what the difference is. Then we have the Llama 4 Maverick. So it beats the GPT 4.0 and the, the Gemini 2.0 Flash, and it has comparable results to the new DeepSeek V3. And so again, that's the thing that kind of caught everybody's attention. That's the thing that kind of set everything on fire, put the meta team into overdrive to develop something like this. So they did create it, something that's matching it on specifically reasoning and coding, but at less than half the active parameters. So again, that's kind of their killer use case is this idea of a best in class performance to cost ratio. And on the LM arena, as you can see here, it jumps up to a rank of two, going head to head with ChatGPT 4.0 and Grok 3 preview. Now notice that for license, they say Llama, whereas the DeepSeek is the MIT open source kind of a more permissive license. So the Llama license, while we refer to it as open source, you kind of have to put in a little asterisk after it because they did add their own sort of limitations and restrictions on it. And then next we have the Llama 4 Behemoth, and it's their most powerful 
model yet and among the world's smartest LLMs. It outperforms GPT 4.5, Claude Sana 3.7, and Gemini 2.0 Pro on several STEM benchmarks. Now, notice here they're saying this is the most intelligent teacher model for distillation. So if you're using it to distill knowledge and basically create synthetic data for training of other models, this is the model, the behemoth, that will be used for that sort of the alien queen laying eggs to be used for building other models for your own specific use case. As they mentioned here, they're saying they believe that openness, so open source, drives innovation and is good for developers, good for meta, and good for the world. As we talked about earlier, China is releasing a ton of very good open source models, both AI and in robotics as well. And we do expect to see a wave of more open source stuff out of China for, for vision, for everything else. And some people, for example, Balaji on Twitter, he's saying that perhaps this is their sort of fighting approach to trying to counter the big tech of the U.S. If they're able to just flood the global market with a very good, very efficient open source models that are competitive with what is produced by big tech in the U.S., that was certainly sort of undermined big tech's ability to make money off of AI. China is much better at producing the hardware at manufacturing stuff, you know, the robots, the, the trinkets, the phones, etc. So if they're able to undermine big tech on the open source front by releasing the, the software, the AI, that might be a winning strategy for them. Now, that's just a theory. That's something that's being discussed. But as you can see, Meta is sort of the on the other side of that. They're trying to be the world leader in open source AI. Sounds like there'll be some more announcements at the LlamaCon on April 29th in terms of how these models were built. So first of all, before this, Meta did not use a mixture of experts. All of their previous models were what's called dense models, where it's sort of a one thing versus a multiple experts that are called up as needed. As I say here in the mixture of experts models, each token activates only a fraction of the total parameter. So not all the employees in the company, but only a certain subset that's dealing with that project. And that MOE architecture, they're more compute efficient for training, for inference, and given a fixed set training flops budget, they deliver higher quality compared to a dense model. So now with a bit of a, a GPU shortage, right? It's a, a bit of a limitation, certainly one of the biggest bottlenecks to scaling up AI. Running the MOE architecture just gives you a more efficient training inference if you have a limited budget of GPUs and time that you're able to use them, et cetera. And as you can see here, so it's a very reasonable cost per 1 million input and output tokens, uh, certainly a lot cheaper than a GPT-4.0. It wins at image reasoning on the MMMU on Math Vista. It looks like it's, it's a little bit better than the Gemini 2.0 Flash, much better than GPT-4.0. Wins at image understanding, live code bench, so on the Live Code Bench and, and the MMLU Pro, so it looks like the DeepSeek, the new 3.1, does squeeze out and is a little bit better at some of those. So they mentioned here that the 3.1's date is unknown, so they provide their internal results. As always, I mean, these benchmarks, they're good at sort of a first glance to understand where these models fit in, but it's not the end-all be-all because at the end of the day, everybody's going to show kind of what they're best at. And at the end of the day, it's your own use cases that matter. Certainly, most of this seems great, very reasonable, great performance. But at the end of the day, it's how the users like it is what matters. Now, with the Llama 4 Scout, of course, that's the 10 million token window model. And early on, there was a lot of issues with these larger context length, with them being able to find specific information in a large amount of text. Google was one of the first ones to kind of start publishing their results on these retrieval needle in a haystack tests. And here we have the results of the needle in a haystack test for both text and on the right here for video, because keep in mind, it's multimodal. The Llama Scout also does very well against comparable models of the same size. Well, of course, being massively bigger in terms of the context window. And then we have the two trillion parameter behemoth. Of course, they refer to that as the teacher model, capable of creating other models for specific use cases. It has a state-of-the-art performance for non-reasoning models on math, multilinguality, and image benchmarks, and it's the perfect choice to teach the smaller Llama 4 models. So as you can see here, they co-distilled the Llama 4 Maverick, so kind of that mid-sized model, from the Llama 4 Behemoth. 
So that was the teacher model for the Llama 4 Maverick. And of course, in terms of the quote unquote open source license, it's not quite open source. The Llama license is its own thing. So first and foremost, users and companies that are in the EU, they're prohibited from using or distributing the models. Now, the laws in the EU make it so that it's very difficult for these companies to be able to meet those re regulations. So a lot of these models either don't appear in the EU or, or much later or severely limited. And that is unfortunate. It does seem that some of the EU leadership, they're beginning to slowly change their view of this. They're realizing that they might be left behind unless they're willing to support innovation and, you know, make it a little bit easier, a little bit less burdensome for these people to allow the citizens of the EU to use these models. So here's kind of the specific thing that talks about EU. So it does seem like individuals and companies in the EU are generally prohibited from using these specific models. I ran this through ChatGPT. It did find some exemptions. So it looks like if you're a company that's outside the EU, you can develop products and services and distribute them within the EU. And also if you're an employee that lives in the EU, we're working for an outside company, you can use that, you can develop in the Llama ecosystem, but you're not allowed to use it for your own personal projects or purposes. I gotta say, I do not understand why the EU places such burdensome regulations on their people. It seems like it's a kind of an important technology. Why would you prevent the people you're trying to govern from having access to it? It's it, it doesn't seem like a good idea. Let me know what you think in the comments, but man, I mean, if you're creating regulations so that no company is able to release their product in your country, then you're basically outlawing that product in your country, right? So the EU, when AI started coming out, they were saying how they want to be the first in regulation. That was their only thing. Like they want to put all these regulations in place first. They did, but I'm hoping that some of them are kind of thinking about and going, maybe it wasn't such a great idea. I don't know, let me know if I'm missing something. And as uh, tons of people on X have pointed out, it does look like a llama for reasoning is coming. If you visit this URL, it's got a little teaser saying it's coming soon. Another thing that you better believe is coming soon is me diving in and testing these models out.